All right, and we're back. Um, it is Comp 305, it's winter 2016, and it's week 11, part one of our broadcast. And um, what we're going to be talking about today is how to create a simple menu, right, um, for your game, right? Because you need to make a menu for your game. One of the requirements, right, there's actually a few scenes. If you notice for your final project, one of them is a menu scene. It might be a scene that's for your instructions. We're going to talk about that. How to, how to create that, those kind of things. How to switch between scenes, you know, going back and forth uh, is really important. Part of it is how to build, also how to build your game. I think people still have trouble building the game. They don't understand, right? So let's do that. So we'll make a new uh, new project today that we'll call, um, again, instead of, it's going to be Comp 305, Winter 2016, and we'll call this Menu Demo. Nice and easy for everyone to understand what it is, right? I'll create the project. It's going to be a 3D project. And at the same time, now that the project is created, um, again, when we create a project here in Unity, what we want to do, and I'm using this split, this split view that I always use. Again, your view might look a little different, but I always create my folder structure first. This is going back to kind of imagine if I was making a new project all together. So again, my folder structure, I put it all together like scripts, and then scenes. You know. um, how about some other folders? Like um, an example of that would be uh, textures. If I have any textures or models, you bring them in now. Prefabs, of course. We have some prefabs in there, right? Materials. And we can continue to go through this and add more and more. But the idea is we have to have some kind of uh, folder structure. I'm going to make a new scene right now. So I'm going to say File, Save Scene. And it's going to ask me where I want to save it. And I'm going to save it, of course, inside my Scenes uh, folder. <laughs> We're going to call this scene menu, right? The menu scene. All right. <clears throat> so this is our scene. It's called menu. And we're going to start building our, our, uh, our project a little differently. Um, our, obviously, our menu scene is empty, right, right now. Um, what I want to do is inside our, if we go to Unity, if I go File, and I go Build Settings, this is where I want to start off. To, so. We haven't really talked about build settings too much. We've been kind of, I kind of glossed over it and said, hey, just, you know, build your, your project and put it up on, on uh, you know, on eCentennial, and we're good, right? But some people know how, don't know how to do this. Take a look at the target platform for me. My target platform is Mac, right? And there's Windows and Linux and, and so on. You can make as many builds as you want, right? But you need a target for your builds. You need actually a target, what you're going to build for me. If you're building it for me, build it for Mac, because I have a Mac, right? If you build it for, you know, Windows, I'm going to have an executable that I have to run inside of a emulator, right? So, you know, if you're building it for me, build it for Mac, right? Um, I'm going to build it for, for Mac myself. Notice that there's x86, x86-64. That's going to take care of my, um, you know, my uh, better architecture. So I'll build it for that. Um, I could also, you know, flag it as a, a development build, but I'm not going to do that right now. There's also something called cloud build, because you can build it on the cloud, right? Um, you don't need to do that right now. We have web player, which is, by the way, it's been deprecated. Um, it, it, it works, but it, they're still working on something like uh, how, to, how this is going to work. WebGL, right, is another option. If you build it for WebGL, it'll be, you'll, be, you'll build inside of a wrapper. It will not work in Chrome, but other browsers will accept it. So you can build your game for different, different versions, iOS and Android and so on. Um, if you're thinking about building it for Xbox or PS3, PS4, whatever, Windows Store, it won't work. And the reason for it is because if you notice, if I went to Xbox One, I need to have some kind of module that's loaded for my Xbox One. No Xbox One module can't make an Xbox One game, right? I can't deploy it to Xbox One, right? The format I'm talking about. So these are the things that are locked. They, it can work, but you have to get a license from uh, Microsoft or Sony or whatever, right? So for us, all we care about is this one, PC, Mac, and Linux, right? I'm going to build for my Mac, 
And in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to add any open scenes in here first. So let's add my first open scene, which is called menu, my menu scene, right? I'm not going to build it yet. I'm just going to kind of put my scenes together in here. Notice that the index for this scene is zero, right? So I'm starting with this. Okay, fine. Closing it up, not building it yet. Save. I'm saving my scene so that I, I have my, my, de uh, my details. I have a main camera and a directional light. That's cool. And I'm going to build my little menu here. Right. Um, so in my scene right now, it's empty, and we want to keep it simple, and we'll add more complexity as we go. So let's try this out. So in here, I want to right-click, and I want to add a new 3D or UI object. Here's my UI object. And um, I want to start off by adding a button. Right. I think it's pretty nice, right, having a button. Buttons are important for menus, right? So let's add that in. Notice when we add a button, it also adds a couple of things. It adds an event system, like we did before, and a canvas. I like whenever I make my menu to go into 2D mode because I can see the whole menu in 2D. So if I go back to 2D mode, right, as an example, and I scroll back out, if I actually press F to focus in on it, and I scroll back out, I get a view of what my whole, my whole canvas looks like on my scene, on my screen, right? So if I look to my game view, I can see that the button right now is in the bottom left-hand corner, which doesn't do us any good, right? Remember, what I want to do with my menu is set up my button somewhere in the middle or on the side or something that makes sense to what, it, what we're doing, right? Let's make this button the play button. So we're going to rename this button play button. And we're going to change our text, of course, to start. It could be the start button, too. How about that? Start button might be a better name. Start button. And we'll meet, rename our, our, our text to say start, right? So start, make it all caps too, why not? Start. All right, so there's our start button. Um, notice that uh, inside of our canvas, our start button is centered in the middle. That means that's where it's, it's, it's supposed to be. I can reset this button itself by going zero and zero, and it'll go right to the middle of my, of my screen. In the game, it'll look just like this. Start. Right? That's a pretty silly menu. Um, I want to surround this menu with some kind of panel or whatever, right? Um, so let's make a panel. So we're going right, to kind of go on, on the canvas, right-click on the canvas itself, and I'll add a new UI element, at which we'll call panel. Right? So here's panel. And the panel right now is just an overlay. That's what it looks like, right? So here's our overlay, right? And here's my, my canvas. And it kind of overlays my uh, everything else. I want my button to be on top of my panel. So it's inside my panel. So let's put it in there. So you can see my button now is a little bit on top. From a game perspective, it looks like this, right? Not too not too interesting or intelligent. What I want to do is I want to change the size of my panel so that it's not just like this big. It doesn't take the whole canvas. I want to take it so it takes less part of my canvas. And if you notice my scale here in the X, Y, and Z, I can change the scale, right? So I can modify it. So Again, I can kind of do one of these, you know, make my panel a little uh, short. But when I do that, look what happens to my button. It gets all messed up, right? I don't want that to happen. Let's undo that change. And just for now, and, and I know what we're going to do is we're going to put our, our start button inside our menu, our panel. But let's keep it separate for, for the beginning, and then we'll drop our start, pa our start button in there afterwards. Let's see where that happens. So, again, we'll scale everything in. So I'll kind of make my, my, my panel like this. And we'll bring the Y up a little bit as well. And again, you could also change where the button goes and how, or the panel goes and how it's aligned. I definitely want to align at the center of the canvas. That's what I want to make it, right? So the center of the canvas is where this panel is going to be. Make sure that the uh, position X, Y, and Z are zero, zero, zero. And you can also align the width and the height, if you want to be very specific, of how big the actual um, panel is right here, right? So I can say something like, well, right now it's 724 by whatever. I can make it, you know, um, match a specific style. Remember, this is going to scale because on my game, I'm making it so it's free aspect, right? I'm not scaling it. I'm not doing, you know, uh, kind of uh, um, uh, pixel perfect display or anything like that. So that's fine, you know, in terms of how big it is right now. From a scale, it's 0.64 and 0.86 is what I have. Again, if I specify a number, like if I went to 700, right? Um, again, that's what that's going to do is modify this. But notice the scale is still 0.64 and, and 0.86. And the reason for that is if I go back to 1, go back to 1 here for a second. 
I mean, I can continue to mess with the width and the height components here. So here's my width and my height. So I can say something like the width is only 600 or 500. And my scale, you know, kind of retains the size that it is. You can play with this your heart's content. There's my scale. And let's make this about 300. No, it's too long. Too, too small. About 500. Okay, one more. 600. There we go. So 4 by 600. The background picture is kind of ran. <laughs> my source image looks like it's a background image, right? But I can change this source image to make it look whatever I want. Now that I know that my background is 400 by 600, I can make whatever image I want. And all this source image is, is a texture that we can bring in, right? So let's say, for example, I want the texture to be just some um, a border that's transparent, right, um, in the background. We can do this, right? And an example of this is, if I look at the game again, this is what I'm getting, an overlay, right, with the button in the middle, and it's kind of boring, right? So how do I design this a little differently? Well, let's bring up fireworks. And again, it's, it's 400 width by 600 height. Just keep that in mind, right? All right, so let's make a new document that's 400 bit width by 600 height. Let's see what happens. Let's bring it in. Here's what the panel would look like right now. And you know what? Let's modify our canvas on, on uh, uh, in here. So our canvas color is going to be transparent. So make it a ping image, right? So there's nothing in the background. And what I want to do is kind of create almost like a border, you know, kind of thing. Some kind of not too fancy border, just a very simple border. So maybe some kind of um, uh, box with a couple boxes on the side. You know, very, very simple, stupid border that we can make that makes sense. Okay, so again, I'm going to make this um, image the same size. The border is going to be the same size as the or as box right now. It's definitely not a red box, right? We're going to make it transparent. So if you look back down here, there's the transparency. But the border width, we're going to make it some kind of blue color. Let's make a blue. I make the border width like, I don't know, four. And if you notice, it's not exactly the right size. So it's because it's 400 by 600, right? So 400 by 600. And just we have to center it so that's in the center of our screen. Zero, zero, zero. There it is. Now you notice there's just a faint little border here that's about four. But I want to rescale this thing a little bit. Here's our rescale. Here's our scaling. And I want to pull this into just a little bit so we can actually see the border. So it's the same proportions, 400 by 600. But I'm going to scale this in so we get something like, again, probably like 360 by 540. There we go. And now that I have this, I'm going to just center this into the middle of the screen. So this is what my border is going to look like. All right, so making a panel, right? That's all it is, right? But the panel is going to have some boxes on the outside just to make it a little different, right? So I don't know, make some kind of other boxes here that we're just going to put on the side over here. So like a little box like this. Right, and let's make sure it's a box, so it's like, I don't know, 40 by 40, so it's not a, some kind of rectangle. There right, we go, 40 by 40. Guys, I'm eyeballing this. Like, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm just doing it by hand, right? So it's like, I'm not even like, uh, it's not really a big plan here. Um, I'm going to copy and paste uh, and put the actual thing on the, on the same side over here, right? Something like this, right? Just so the, the board, the, the actual panel looks a little different than normal. I'm just doing the same thing here. I'm just playing. Right? So, put it right here. here we go. And the same thing goes with this one here. Put this down. Down over here. There we go. So, some kind of weird border. I know it's, it looks silly, but don't worry about it. Right? Let's save this thing as the, the panel, right? So I'm going to say file, save as. We'll call this uh, panel, right, dot PNG. And we'll put this inside the folder of our, um, of our project. So I'm going to go, and by the way, you could have done this with paint. You could do this with any, any program you want. It's not a big deal. But I mean, you can make it fairly, fairly quickly is what I'm trying to show you here, right? So let's go back to um, uh, desktop. And I'm going to look at Unity projects. And we're working with a project called uh, um, menu demo, and we're going to go into assets, and I'm going to go into textures, and I'm going to save this thing as a panel.ping, and click save. When I do that, and I go back to Unity, it's going to have imported it, right? So here's my textures. Here's my panel texture. And notice that 
it's black on the inside. How come? What it's detecting it as a texture, right? But what I need to do is I need to change this from a regular texture type, right? Um, again, to a sprite, right? So if I go sprite two D and UI, that's cool, right? Sprite mode is single, pixels per unit, 100, and so on. Let's leave it as is for now. But I'm still seeing it as black, right? So if I was to actually put this onto this, right? So let's go back to my panel, right? Apply. If I go to my panel here for a second, so let's look at my panel. So I'll go back to this. And I want to attach a source <laughs> from my background image. If I click the little uh, target here, and I want to choose something that's, that's compatible, notice that there is something called panel, right? And there's my panel, right? Simple? All right. Now, this is what it's going to look like in the game. It's hard to see because the game is, you get this really, you know, this back, this black background, this background here is the skybox, right? Which is the problem of my camera. That's my camera's fault, right? So notice that skybox, let's make solid color only, right? So there's my color, right? So now we're going back to this. And instead of this blue color, this pretty dark, right? It's almost too dark for my, my panel. I mean, if I was to go with something that's a little lighter, I want to go something so that my panel shows up, right? So something that makes sense. And it could be a combination of colors, but you can play around until you find what makes sense to the panel, right? So it looks like there's a panel that's kind of floating in midair, right? There we go. It's just an image. That's all it is. This is what the game is going to look like so far. So when I go into my scene, right, my scene Looks like this. You can't really see it too much, and the background is what it is. Um, again, I could choose my background to be different. Right? Instead of this, I can make it whatever color I want, like white. Right? And if that's what you want, a white panel, a white background, that's up to you. Whatever you want. It's got. I mean, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have. Uh, you know, um, all kinds of uh, sound and you know, you know, you know, whatever I'm gonna add on to it to make it more like a menu scene, or whatever. Right. Right now, if you notice, my, my panel that's inside my menu is flat. It's 2D, right? And that's OK, because we've, we've been dealing with 2D stuff. This, this menu system, by the way, will work with 2D, 3D, whatever you want, because it's inside my canvas element, right? All right. So let's leave it at this. This kind of looks like a pretty good idea. My button is pretty darn ugly. And I think I want to make the same style of button, right? So my image for my button, if I click on my button, here's my start button. Notice that it has an image too called UI Sprite, right? I don't want this. I want my own image, right? But I need to know how big my button is. And before I do this, I want to change my size of my script and everything else so it's compatible. One is that I know my font size is 14. I want to make this something like 20, so it's a little bit bigger. And the size, my actual button size itself right now is 30. I can make it so it's a little fatter, so it's 40, right? And that should be okay for my buttons. But I also want to include the size of my buttons should be all the same to make it like, you know, kind of uh, more balanced, right? So if you look at my start button right now, it's one size. But let's change my text just for the longest one. And I think my longest one would be something like instructions. That would be a, long, a longer text. So if I find instructions, you can see that it's not quite long enough. It's not quite big, right? I mean, it'll fit barely. So I think what I want to try and do is make it just a little bit longer, let's say a 180, right? And that's not bad. You have good padding all the way around. And that's probably the size, the default size of all my buttons. If I want to, I could also make this a little bit more proportional. So maybe a 180 by 60. If I wanted to make it fatter, right? And that might serve me better because I want to put some kind of borders like this around my button to make it more interesting, right? Because right now, you know, my buttons look pretty plain, right? And they, and they look pretty ugly, right? Which I don't want. So how do I do that? So how do I, you know, how do I do this thing? Even this might be a little bit too small, because if you think about it, if I put a border that looks kind of like the, this thing here, right? And if I put this all the way around, it might be a little bit too small. So maybe even 200 might be a bit better. And if, as I start adding, you'll see what I'm talking about. 200 by 80, right? Might be okay. All right, looks pretty fat for my button, but this is the design that's coming off my head right now. So what the hell, right? Now that I know my button is 200 by 80, let's go back to fireworks. All right, so we got fireworks. I already have this design, and I'm just going to crush it, right? So what am I going to do, right? Um, typically, when we have a design like this, right, this pattern, right, that I have, I'm going to group it. So right-click, group. 
And what I could do for now is, it's just a bitmap image, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize everything. So when I kind of click onto here, and if I click my resizing, right, what I want to do is I want to kind of clip it down so that it's 200 by 80, right? It's got to be exactly the same size, right? So if I go like this, and if I start scrunching down, notice that it's going to lose some of its shape, right? That doesn't look quite right, right? And also notice that I lose some of my um, the border width. And if I undo, this is a problem, right? So let's undo the. So this is good. These boxes I want to keep, right? The idea, right? But I want to make this box, right? Instead of squeezing it down or resizing it, let's make it 200 by 80 and see what it looks like. So width 200, right? Height 80. And if 80 doesn't work. Right, we can resize it later on in the in the actual thing. So now I've got something that kind of works, looks okay. But that's the whole image, 200 by 80, right? So I want to make this even smaller, right? So uh, a little bit less proportionate than this. So instead of 200, we'll do something like 180, right? And we'll make it so instead of 80, we'll go back to 60. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. And that's the real size of my image, right? I want to stick with inside, inside my image itself. So I only have like 20 pixels or whatever to, to play with around this image itself, right? Because this is what my button will look like right now. It's pretty darn plain. <laughs> so how do I do that? How do I mess that up, right? So I want to kind of make another box. And here it is, right? And what I want to do with this one is make it 200 by 80. So 200 by 80, just to, just to start styling it up. I know this is like a little bit of graphic design, but hey, you know, you got to do some of this stuff. I know we're not designers, I know we're programmers, but you know, part of the stuff that we do with everything else is you know, put things in proportion so that we can understand how things are done. Right? Not necessarily do them all, but understand what's going on. So you don't have a lot of space here, right guys? 200 by 80, if I make it like what this box is, and I'm, I'm trying to picture how I'm gonna put these things in to give them the same design. Don't worry about the outer box, that outer box is gonna go away, right? But it's just an idea of what the outside border is gonna look like. Right, so here I'm going to put this inside here, right, and it's going to kind of touch with this one, and I definitely want to change the size of this border, right? So or the box instead of 40 by 40, let's go by 20 by 20, just to make it so that it's it's proportional, right? That's not bad, and just because it's hard to see because we're going to a smaller scale, we're going to zoom in. And the idea is that I'm just going to do one. Once I've done one and I do the other one, right, I can resize everything so that way I can resize everything. There it is. Just that way I can I can do everything by eye. I'm gonna do this as quickly as I can so I don't waste your time for the design. But I want you to understand how I my what I'm thinking, right? Not necessarily, you know, that you'll do it my way. You might do it your own way. I'm just making little boxes. You know that, uh, that you know kind of speak to me, but they may not speak to you too much. You might say, "I don't like that design, Tom." So that's kind of the button, right? Right, and it's kind of in line with what I was doing before. I kind of made this little fancy button, you know, whatever you could use instead of squares, you could use some other funky kind of you know shapes or whatever. Make your own design. Download a button from the internet. It doesn't make it doesn't matter, right? But that's my button shape. Let's zoom out. Uh, I don't need the extra these other extra pieces, so let's get rid of those. And now that I've got that, I'm going to say modify canvas and fit to canvas, so it'll just be that, and that's my button. Now this whole thing, if I go modify canvas, canvas size, should be 200 by 80, right? That's the size of my canvas. Let's make sure that my canvas is 200 by 80, because that's the size that it's gotta be. It's gotta be very exact, as, as exact as possible, there we go. All right, so that is my button image, right? So let's save that as a button image. So file, save as, it's pointing to the right to the panel. We're just gonna call this button, right? And press save. When I do that, I go back to Unity and I have a button as well, but the button is not the right thing. I need to switch this from texture, right? Or this is okay. But notice how my panel isn't a panel, it's a sprite, right? And that's what I want to do here. I want to make this into a sprite 2D and UI, right? Leave it everything as is and click apply, right? And when I've done that, once I've once I've gone there, I can actually choose my button. So here's my start button. And then I want to go in here where it says my start my target graphic, right? And I want to choose button, right? That's what I want to choose. Right. 
So, whoa, what's going on? How come my target graphic isn't working anymore? Right? So let's go back. Button. Right? It's this one. Hold on a second. Button. Huh? What do you mean? It's 200 by 80. No, 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 no. no. Don't go pixel by pixel. We're not doing a pixel by pixel. We're doing an aspect, right? And um, as long as my button is the right size and dimensions, right? Look how it looks. It fits, right? So that's what my button looks like right now. Let's play the scene. This is what it looks like here. Let's play the scene to see what it looks like, right? So I play the scene. You know, as an example, I'm playing it and notice that I don't have any any interactivity here, right? Because there's nothing. There's no nothing that's going on here, right? I gotta modify some of these other stuff to make the button work, right? So I do otherwise it doesn't look like it's doing anything, right? So this is my button, here's my material. Um, and um, I got a source image, that's cool. And it says rate cast target. Image type is the simple image, right? I can make it tiled, filled you know, whatever, right? Um, but that's what my image looks like, right? So how do I, how do I make it so that I, you know, I, I swap in and out like I did before? Well, in order for you to see the difference, let me just go back out to what it was before. So, right, remember it was UI button before, right? That was what it was. So if I go back to my start button and if I undo, so I'm going to undo, 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 and keep undoing until we get back to this, right? So here's my canvas, here's my start button, and it looks like I've got a UI sprite, that's cool. That's what my actual start button looks like, and if I press play, just like the other way around it, right? and if I hover over it, I got nothing still. Right? Even though I'm doing a UI, right? I don't have any interactivity with my start button whatsoever. And you have to ask yourself, why is that? Because remember when we made buttons before, I could hover over them and I get kind of like an in and out. Here's my button script, by the way, right? And this is where all the magic happens with the button, right? My transition says color tint, and my normal color and my highlighted color are there. Well, I'm going to have the same thing when I change my UI sprite to button, right? That's what I have to do. But So I don't need the image. That's not going to be uh, modified. It's going to be down here where it says button script. All right, so start button is the image. Here's my, my normal color, and here's my highlighted color. So they're both white, right? So color tint is one option. The other one is sprite swap, right? So I have my highlighted sprite, my press sprite, my disabled sprite. Well, look, I got all these different ones, right? So I could make sprites for all of these, and this would swap out. When I hover over it, it does something. When I hover out, it does something else. So it would be nice if, when I hover over it, it kind of gives almost like this, I don't know, overlaid background, right? This kind of almost like a white background when I hover over it. So where do I create it? Right here. This is where I would create the overlay background. So let's go back in here and do that. So when I kind of hover over, this is my regular button, right? And notice that if I click this, this box right here, right, um, the background color is nothing. I can make it so that it's white. But I don't want to make it so that it's completely like this. This is too much. I want it to make it somewhat transparent, right? So let's make it so that it's 50% transparent. That. So when I hover over it, it does one of these, right? Notice that my squares do not go that way, though. Just my button. So I got to make it so that my squares kind of hover out too, right? So I kind of do one of these, click all these little squares, just so that way when I hover over, the whole button kind of grays out, right? Let's go to that 50%. And I'm going to file, save that as, right? Notice that there's button. We're going to say, instead of button, we're going to call this thing button over. When I hover over, that's what happens, right? And I click Save. Go back to Unity. I have a button over. i got to go convert it from texture to a UI, Sprite 2D and UI. I click Apply to do that. And now I have a hover state that i got to use. I'm going to go back to my Start button. And notice that here's my highlighted. I don't have pressed and I don't have disabled, right? But I'm going to click highlight it. I'm going to target uh, the button over, right? All right. So let's see how that works, if it works at all, right? Because you have to be very careful here. Because I have, I'm, I'm I'm going to my start button image, and then I'm going to my button over. Let's see if that works at all. So press play, 
and I'm playing, and if I hover over, I got nothing. How come? Anybody? Why is it not working? Well, notice that I got an image, right? But this one isn't an image, right? Here's my image for my button, which is a color and everything else, right? And what I want to do, and this is where it says ray cast target, right? I want to kind of do the same thing because see how the difference between this and this? Let's just go in here and just delete it for a second. I need another one of those components, right? Let's see if that's true. So if I go to I go to image, so I'm just going to search for it. It is. Now it says invalid. Can't add image to start button because an image already added to the game object. A game object can only contain one graphic component, right? Which I have. So how do I do that? How do I swap out from one to the other? And it says sprite swap is the transition type, right? Anybody have a you know, any kind of suggestions. Script would be one. But why would then I be able to drag, it, drag and drop? If it says non-sprite, here's my sprite, right? And so how then does it the, doesn't work? Like, I mean, I'm trying to drag and drop. I have an image. Here's my image, my, uh, uh, my button over. That's what this thing is, right? My button over image. And it's, it is a sprite, so it's compatible, right? But when I hover over it, so if I go to my event system, my event system is good, right? It's, it's going to work because I know that if I click onto it, the button will work right Right now, even if it doesn't show anything. So here's my start button. And, um, you know, my start button itself has an image, which is this image. I can't add another one, right? I can't just go, like, hover over and do one of these. If I replace it, here's what it looks like when I replace it, right? So if I run it, it'll just look like this all the time, right? Which actually, it's not a bad little, not bad little way of, of looking. Uh, maybe I like this better than the one that's transparent. Don't know. Right, but um, but that's not what I want. I want my my other one, my button, right? And when I hover over it, I want my other other option. So this is one. So you can try and 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 pin it in here as a highlighted sprite. Here's the press sprite. Here's the disabled sprite. And it says navigation is automatic, right? Um, which means it'll it'll navigate when you press the buttons. It'll go to the next one and the next one. Um, so how do I do that? Let's try it anyway. Let's put just put that take this button over and put it in here, right? So I've got it loaded in. Right, here's my button over. I don't have my none. I don't. I don't have my uh, press sprite. What it looks like, and it would probably look different, right? So let's make it so that we have pressed and disabled, and see what those both look like as well, right? So I can make those. That's pretty easy. Right? So pressed. I want to undo. Undo. It's going to look like this. When I press onto it, it's going to go white, like this, right? So file save as, and we'll save. Instead of button over, we'll say button pressed. There we go. And uh, disabled, um, you know, as an example, will be grayed out. So we'll change the background from this background, where it's, where it's white. We'll change it to like some kind of gray color. Well, not not too dark. There we go. Maybe even that's even too dark. I'm just gonna find the right color as I swim up the gray scale. That's too light. There we go. So that'll be the grade look. So this is this is disabled. File, save as, and we'll make this button disabled. So I'm going to fill them in, right? So there's disabled. Go back to Unity now that I've got those. I've got to, I've got to modify these, right? So I've got uh, button disabled. It's not really. It's a texture. I want to change it to Sprite UI for supply. Button pressed is a texture. i got to go. You know, Sprite 2D UI, press supply. There we go. So I've got all the items that I need, right? I just got to apply them. So I go to my start button, and in where it says button, I'm going to change from uh, over here, and I'm going to drag and drop the other ones. Press Sprite and disabled Sprite. So press Sprite and disabled Sprite. So I've got all my all my uh, buttons aligned here, but still, when I press play, notice that I've got no interactivity. I press on the button, it doesn't do anything, right? Which kind of makes me mad, right? So I don't understand. So that's one way. Let's do the other way. The other way would be color tint, right? Color tint doesn't use, it uses the same target graphic, but color tint does this. The normal color is this, the highlighted color is this, the press color is this, disabled is this. So let's go highlighted color. Let's make it so that it is, it is darker. So we're just going to make a little bit of a darker color, just a touch darker. 
And let's see if that makes any difference. So press play. And here's my highlighted color. And I kind of go in there and see anything? Anything going on here? Nada. I don't see a darn thing. I've used a custom graphic. Let's go back to that. How about none? So none, no transition, and you can you can program it by uh, code, right? Sprite swapped as one, and there's also animations, right? If I click animation, I can animate, um, you know, my uh, my button with the animator, right? So I can do things like when I hover over it, I can change the size of the button so it's, it makes it bigger, or one of those kind of things. It's the same button, but what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, you know do different things, and it'll auto generate the animations. So normal, highlighted, press, trigger, disable, trigger, all this stuff is going to happen. And, or I can choose um, an animation controller that I want to create. We're not going to do this. It's a little bit more complex. Let's go back to Sprite Swap. So this is right for, anima for you know, different kinds of, of UI buttons, but it's not quite working. OK, we need a script. In order for my button to work at all, for it to press to go somewhere else and to do anything else, we need a script. And usually what I recommend is you, you have something like a um, UI controller or a game controller to house the script, all right? And remember, you need a script that has a public. It's got to be public, right? It's got to return void. Those are the two options. And it doesn't have to be on click. You can call it whatever you like. Like, for example, start button click would be the thing that you can have. Let's try this script. So I want to attach a script to the button, or I want to make my own script. And when the button gets pressed, I want to target that script. So let's do this. So we'll go cut, you know, right click. I'm going to create a new empty object. It's got to be outside of my UI. And we're going to call this game controller. Okay, here's my game controller object, right? Doesn't matter where it is in the screen. And I'm going to right click here and I'm going to attach a new uh, component, right, which is going to be a script. So let's go back to scripts. And let's go create new C sharp script. There it is. We'll call this game controller. We've seen this before. And the game controller is going to be attached to the game controller object. Right? So let's just attach it. There it is. And we'll double click on the script to bring up MonoDevelop. Now, for MonoDevelop, we have a start and an update. But in this particular case, probably not going to need either one of those. I'm going to leave them in place for now. But uh, we're going to have to create a new script. And the script that I want to make is you know, when um, it's a, I need a, an event handler, event handler for a start button click. That's what I want to make, right? So when my start button clicks, that's what it's going to be. Remember, it's going to be public, void, and then we have to call it what we want. So I'm going to call this start button click. And what I want to do here is inside my start button click, for now I want to do debug.log just to see that it's working. You guys may have forgotten how to do this. Clicked. Let's say clicked. All right, so that's what's going to happen. So this, when I click on the button, it's going to make that click. But I got to point to it. I'm going to go back to Unity here. And when I click on the start button, um, and if I go into my script, notice that there's an on click event down on the bottom here. And we've shown you this before. I'm going to click the plus, right? And uh, notice that. On the plus, I don't have any function. There's no clicking, nothing, right? How come? What do I need to do here? Well, uh, first of all, I can tar I can target. Um, these are objects: canvas, directional light, da da da. These are my objects. Here's my assets, right? For what I'm targeting, uh, assets in the scene. These are all the assets that I have in my scene right now: UI, unlit, detail, blah blah blah. But how do I target it so that I have a function that's connected to this thing? What do I do? Anybody? This is on a test. You guys would be in trouble. Huh? Do what? The runtime. All right. So editor and runtime. Drag and drop that. Oh, this. All right. So if I go like one of these and drag and drop it in here, well, that's good. All right. All right, now in the function, I'm going to go to, to my game controller functions, right? And I need to look for the one that says start button, uh, start button click. That's the one, right? Now that I have my start button click associated with it, uh, right now it's going to just run it. So let's run this thing and see if it works. So if I click onto this, it should give me 
some kind of console, but nothing's going on. How come? Come on, guys. Why isn't this working? Here's my game controller. Clicking onto this thing, nothing's happening. It's supposed to. My game controller start button click is working. It's, it's, it, I can find it, right? But it's never getting. It's never getting here. If I go to uh, uh, my my script here, here's where I just say debug debug dot log. When I click onto it, start button click, click onto it. It's supposed to say you know output to the controller. Right? How come it's not working? Hmm? Panel could be the panel. All right. If that's true, right, we have our panel script already. We can always put this panel back. We know it's 400 by 600. Let's disable the panel, right? So this is the panel. Right? So no more panel. And, oh, look, I get the this swapping procedure, right? And if I click onto it, I get clicked. So that was the problem the whole time. It wasn't working because my panel, let's go back here. My panel, right, somehow is in the wrong position, right? So how's that work? Here's my start button. Here's my panel. What do we do wrong? Well, my start button, what if we put my start button in my panel like this? Right, so my panel's on the outside. My start button's here. And now let's see if it works. So go on my panel, da, 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 and hover over it. Click onto it, it works, right? Notice that it stays. Once I've clicked onto it one time, right? So notice I can do this as much as I want. But once I click onto it once, right, it stays because I got my pressed event happening, right? All right. Panel, I mean, you have to understand what's happening here in the canvas, right? Panel, you get your start button, and then your text, your start button label, right? But now that I have this pattern, I can make as many buttons as I want. I got my start button, and I can make my instructions button, okay? So let's just copy this button, this start button itself, right? And what we're going to make it is a generic button, all right? So I'm going to copy it, so I'm going to duplicate it. There's my start button. Right, and what I want to do is make it a generic button that has, um, you know, some kind of text on it. So let's just pull it out here for a second. Here's my start button. It's a UI component, but I want to make it a prefab, right? So I want to be able to use it over and over again. It has all this stuff built into it, right? The only thing I need to change is instead of instructions, it's going to say text. Is what buttons say typically, and my start button is just going to be called, you know, button. So we're just going to call this button. This. And what I want to do is I want to take this button and throw it into my prefabs folder, like this. So here's my prefabs folder. And now I have a button prefab. Why? Because now I can delete this. And I can also delete my start button. Right? Because my button, my start button is not my part of my prefab yet. You'll see. And I'll rename this in a second. Pull in my button into my panel. Right, here's my button. And I can re readjust where it's going to be in a second. Remember, it's going to be zero and zero here. And a script attached to it, right? Typically, it would have a script attached to it. In this case, it doesn't. That's the one thing we have to change. That's OK. We have everything running anyway. Here's my button. I want to rename this button, right? It's going to be called Start Button again. And change my text in here, right? My text in here to Start is what we had before, right? But now what I can also do is pull in another button for instructions. So I can pull another button, pull it into my panel. And um, in this particular case, what I want to do is just move it out. So let's say, for example, I have instructions that I want to put over here, like this. And notice that my, my, Z, my X position is still going to be 0. But my Y position might be something like 100. Go back to my game. This is what it's going to look like. Right, my text and my, and my button. Now start, I don't know, I think it's a little bit too too high up. So let's move it back down a little bit. So I'm just select my start button and move it down to the, the bottom here. Maybe I'll have a bunch of buttons here, like you know, options you know, or instructions or whatever. Here's my, it might be another one for quit. That'll be another button that I need. So let's undo that. So maybe I'll make, move my, um, my start button a little bit lower. And then underneath that, I'll put another button. So um, again, I could also duplicate now that I have one, right? And I want my buttons to be inside my panel. That's another thing I need to have to happen, right? So this button here is going to be the instructions button. And we planned for this one, so hopefully it'll work. I'm going to make it so it's instructions button. There we go. Instructions button. 
And then inside there, my text is actually going to say instructions. It's not bad. So it kind of works. Oops. Kind of works. And then underneath this will be quit. So why don't we do this instead of you know trying to pull this uh, pull this off? I'll just duplicate the start button. So I'll control or command D, and I'll have the start button, and I'll rename this thing as quit button. And then inside my quit button, I'm going to have some text that says quit. Okay, and I'm going to pull this quit button. Here's my quit button. It's kind of layered on top of the other one. I'm going to pull it down so it's kind of in the right position. And if you want to layer it so that its instructions are a little bit different than quit or whatever, you can certainly look at the what I'm looking from a position perspective. So remember that we have um, 600 pixels of, of height right now, right? And if I want to equally space the buttons, right, then I want to divide it into uh, pixels, uh, you know, spaces of 200, right? And if my, my size of my button, the height of my button is 80, right? 80 minus 200, right, or 100, 200 minus 80 roughly is 120, divided by 2 is 60, right? So I, I, it basically, it should be increments of 60 for each time. So wherever my button is, 60 down from the top, right? So my instructions, if I want to place this out to where it is, right? Right now, my position is 100. Maybe what I do, I want to move it to is, and again, I want to show you the top. Right now, it's in the middle, right? And it's it's uh, 60 away from the middle, right? What I want to do is, is place it at the top. So here's my top. And I want to say, if I, if I, if I move it up to the top here, just to show you, so here's, here's where it goes to the top, where it says minus 99, right at the top here is minus 39. And right where I come to the, the, the top, it goes to zero. So here's, remember, the button is centered in the middle. So if I go zero, and if I go to minus 60, right, it's kind of up there, but not quite what I want. So it's got to be a 60 buffer, right? So let's go minus 120 for the first button. That's pretty good. Same thing with my quit button. My quit button is going to be kind of in the bottom, right? And again, you can align this in different ways. But I want to align this to the bottom of my screen. Why am I doing the alignment? Because remember that my, my whole object is going to squish and squash depending on, on how big my aspect is. So if I put this, if I run this on a, on a device, like a, some kind of um, iPhone or whatever, um, it's going to be squished and squashed to, to, to the size of my iPhone, right? So I want to do the same thing. I want to kind of pull this button down now that I have this all the way to the bottom, right? So this is where it would be the bottom, right? This is the zero, zero point. Right? And as I move up, I move back up to 120. So this is kind of the exact same as everything else. And this one, of course, would be aligned to the middle, like we had before. So I can just go back to zero. I look back at the game. This is what it's going to look like. Instructions start and quit. So kind of a more balanced aspect, right? Um, when I hover over, right, these buttons are all going to have the same effects. Right, so hover over, hover over, hover over. All the same effects that we have for our buttons. They're all custom buttons, the way we want them to look. Again, you can make them look as fancy or as simple. This is very simple and silly, stupid, like the buttons that we want to make it. You can add animations. You can do all kinds of stuff. But more or less, all of our buttons are, are working. Our menu is going to work. And again, the, the menu should kind of go with the game. If you're going to make a sci-fi kind of game, the menu should look kind of sci-fi-ish, right? You know, if you're going to make a, you know, some kind of old, like old Western, <laughs> these buttons look like almost from the old West or something else, that's cool. You might want to modify the text, so the text uh, changes as well. This is this font is actually doesn't match with the buttons, right? You want to match a font that makes sense, right? Um, so you may have to choose another font um, to go with your game. But now the buttons are working, and I need some scenes for them to go to. So I want a start scene, right? So a play scene. I want a, a the button to quit. How do I do that, right? So it's going to quit. And I also want the button to have an instruction screen, right? So I need those scenes. So let's do the scenes first. So here's my menu scene. Let's make a new scene, create a new scene, which we'll call instructions. All right, this is where my instructions are going to be displayed, my menu, my instructions. I need, I don't need to quit, right? But I do need a, some kind of play scene for now, right? So create new scene. And this would be the level, game level. Well, we can call this level one, right? This is my play scene. Now I need to build up my, my build settings. So I'm going to go to File, Build Settings again. And notice that I have my menu scene, but I have my other scenes that are in here as well. I want to have my, inst my instruction screen in there. And I also want to have my level scene, right? That's going to be in there as well. Okay. 
menu, instructions, and level. All those things are built. Notice that my menu scene is going to start first, but these things are listed here inside of our inside of our scenes window. Okay, I'm not going to build everything yet. Okay, so what I wanted to do is very simple. When I go to my instructions, I want to build a little canvas that says instructions, right? And we can fill this in later on with our own panel. By the way, you can use a panel just like I did here for my instructions with some typed instructions, how to play the game, right? You can use an image. If you don't want to use a panel, you can use a 2D image. You can make this scene 2D instead of 3D, right? Do whatever you like. Um, but let's uh, kind of go into the instruction screen. First, I'm going to save this scene. I'm going to go into my instruction screen. Here it is. It's empty. And there's nothing in the scene at all. What I want to do is I want to add a text UI element. So UI, and we'll see just a text element right in the middle of my scene. Again, I want to look at this from a 2D perspective. I want to change the uh, thing so it's 20, right, as an example. And maybe what we'll do is we'll put a panel together just for now, right, that shows instructions. That's all it's going to say, right? So, um, and that'll be inside the middle of the screen. So there's my text. That's neat. But what I really want is a panel that goes in the middle. So I'm going to say um, UI uh, panel. Oh, man, what the hell? What could I have done to make this my job a little easier? Make the panel a prefab to pull in so that all my everything is preserved. I don't have to do the, my work all my work again, right? So let me just double click here. I'm gonna save my scene for a second. I'm gonna double click in my menu scene. And I'm gonna grab this panel object, right? So the panel object itself. Now the panel has these things in here, right? So what I want to do is duplicate my panel for a second. Right? Just for a second. So duplicate. And notice that my panel also has all this stuff inside of it. Well, I don't want this stuff inside of it. I'm just going to get rid of it. I want buttons. And this panel, um, you know, as an example, uh, I can't call the same name, right? But this is like my UI panel or whatever it is. And this is kind of be my menu panel. This is the name of this menu panel. Just to make it different. Menu panel. And this one will just be a panel, like a, a, like a button. So I can pull this in if I want. Panel. And I'll take this inside my prefabs, and I'll pull this in. Hey, okay, panel. Yay, now let's go back, save everything, and go to my next scene again. So go to my scenes, go into my level, my instructions. Erg, pretty ugly, right? And I don't want this panel. I want my panel, right, which is this one, which I'm going to pull into my canvas. Hey, okay, there it is, right? Building up my UI elements. That's what we're doing here, right? So I go back to game. Right? Oh, I got a problem. Why? Because my game still has the same camera effects. So here's my main camera. And um, it looks like I want to make my background the same. So instead of skybox, I'm going to go to solid color. And I want to choose this. What could I have done differently to make this easier? Make a prefab for my camera, right? So let's go back. I'm, I'm showing you this stuff so that you know you're clear on how all this works, so that you're not, you know, if you're going to make it yourself, then you don't have to rethink everything. So here's my main camera. We're going to rename this thing um, just camera. So rename. And what I'm going to do is the way it is, I'm going to pull it inside of my inside my prefab. So there's my prefab camera, right? And that's good. I'm going to save everything. And um, that's cool. But did I do the right scene? Uh, I did not do it in the right scene to kill it. Sorry. Otherwise, I would have had it right. Sorry, I did the right thing, the wrong scene. Delete. What I meant to do, right? <laughs> Let's go back to my scenes. Menu, camera, rename, right? And in my, this will be the menu camera for a second. But I'm going to pull this one into my prefabs the way it is because it says all my settings. There we go. And so now this one is going to be a, uh, a menu camera. Right, here's my menu camera. Now it's important how we how we how we uh, name everything so we can differentiate them from one scene to the other. All right, so I'll save the scene, go back into the next scene, go into instructions, go into my camera, get rid of it, right, and pull in my prefab. All right, here's my camera. That's what I'm gonna put on the top of my scene here. There we go. Here's my camera, and now we go into here. I see that everything is the way it should be, right? It's already preset for you. I've got everything going on, and just to make it so it's clear, this is my instructions camera. Oops, instructions camera. There we go. Instructions camera, my directional light, everything else is in here. And now I can start building this up. I want to put some uh, text in here, like almost like a title, right? 
Um, and what I want to try and do is inside my panel is where the text is going to go. So I'm going to add in a UI text component. Okay, this is pretty bad, right? And where do I want this? I want this to be at the top. And I want to center it in the middle of my scene, right? Notice that it's way over here. And I'll come, how come it's over here? I'm trying to make this in the middle. What about my panel? Where's that? My panel, that's centered in the middle at 400 by 600. My text is inside my panel, but it's not centered, and it looks like it's off to the side. How come? Well, in order for you to see where this is, this is the middle, right? And if I was to zoom in here so you can see, where's my... Right. This is what the text looks like. The text has a default shape to it, right? Right now it's 160 by 30, right? I want to definitely change my font size to 20. Like I said before, this is my instructions. And let's call this instructions label or uh, title label. Here's my title label, and this is going to be called instructions. So instructions. That's pretty good. Um, I also can go in here and change the centering of my text to the middle, right? That's kind of what I want to do, right? And again, I could also do things like uh, change the color and blah, blah, and whatever. Now, it's way up here. I don't want it to be up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down so that it's inside the, the top part of my screen in here. Go back to game. This is what it's going to look like. Now, this is look, looks like it's pretty simple, right? And you might have some instructions in here if I want to make my panel the same. Don't worry about it. I'm using it so that we can see that I'm going from one scene to the other. That's all I'm doing. I also want a button, so I go back to my menu. Let's make a back button. What do I do? Pull the button inside my scene, which I already have, right? So back to my panel, my button in here, right? I zoom out, and here's my, my button. And I go down here, right? And notice that I, I want to align my button to the right place, so it's going to be on the bottom, right? There it is. And uh, my button has alignment, which is the zero position for this. And if I'm aligned to the bottom, it's going to be 120 up, if I'm not wrong, from the bottom. And if I look at my game, there it is. This button is going to be called the back button. And it needs some instructions as well we're going to get from our game controller. Hey, I don't have my game controller in my scene. How do I make it persist from one scene to the other? So we use the same script to go from one scene to the other when it, when it persists. It's going to start with my menu, and then when I go to my instructions, my game controller is still going to exist. How do I do that? There's a bit of script to make that happen. We'll go over that in a second. All right, but I want to be able to use the same script. I don't want to have two game controllers. I just want to have one, right? Um, you could, right? The, the advantage of having one game controller is you can, you can kind of almost create like a state, -like state machine, right, that goes from one scene to the next. OK. I don't want to make it a, a prefab. Game controller should be its own thing, right? But the button is here, and I want to make sure that my button text, I'm just setting this up for now. My button text is going to say back, you know, back to menu or whatever, or just back. You can say back to menu. But be careful because you don't want to go outside the, you know, the, the realm of what it looks like. Let's test the scene, right? So if I, if I hover over it, it goes back to menu. I see my instructions, and I can put some instructions text in there if I want to inside something else. Um, or if I want to make this instruction screen a little bit more interactive, I could make my panel bigger. I could have a separate instructions panel as opposed to a regular panel like I'm using right here. You can make it into a prefab, all that kind of stuff. So it drags and drops nicely into your scene. OK, for now, I want to make this back to menu uh, button work. How do I do that? Well, first, let's save the scene. And if I want to make a, uh, a, a, com a component persist right, from one scene to the other, so it doesn't die between the scenes. That's what happens. Whenever you open up a new scene, all the game components that exist in the previous scene, gone, right? They get destroyed. So how do I change that from happening? Well, let's do some searches, right? So I want to say something like uh, persist game components, game object uh, unity, you know, something like that. How can I pass data between two levels, create a persistent game object using a singleton? I don't want to use a singleton. How about this one? Don't destroy on load. <laughs> That's the one I want, right? Um, so in the awake function, right, you can say don't destroy on load, and it says transform.gameObject. You can, you can uh, um, adhere this to whatever it is, right? And if you notice, the don't, this transform.gameObject is really, in this particular case, game object, right? So I need this don't destroy on load script inside my awake function. 
All right, so let's go back to Unity, right? And I want to save this scene and go back to the other scene. Let's go to, to my uh, menu scene. And I have my game controller. Here it is with a game controller script that I'm going to go in here. And inside my awake function, which is not here, await happens before start, right? So before things start off, before things get initialized, void awake is an actual uh, event, uh, Unity event function that happens. And we're going to say, you know, don't destroy on load, right? And we're going to indicate which one it is, which is going to be game object. So don't destroy this game object on load, right? See if that works. So if that's true, we're going to go to Unity, run it. Everything goes well. We're good. When I click Instructions, right? Oh, man. How come, how come my, my stuff's not working now, right? It was working before, right? But somehow my instructions aren't working anymore, right? Something I did wrong. Must be this don't destroy on load thing. Let's see if that's true. So here's my panel, and here's my menu panel. Okay, get rid of this one, right? And let's press play again. And now I can do this kind of stuff. Now I need to do, when I click on my instructions button, I want to make a new, I want to start writing the code, right? So I've already got some code inside my game controller, right? Which is start button click, right? Mm -hmm. That says clicked right now. But this start button is going to go to my scene. Now I've got to use, in order for you to use my scene manager, i got to include it. So I got to go to the top, and I'm going to say using, right, Unity Engine dot scene management. Right, I got to include that as as one of my includes, or else I can't do a scene manager. Right. So when I go to my start button, click. I want it to go to my game. Right. So I want to say something like scene manager dot load scene. And then I want to talk about what scene it's going to be called. I can put the name of the scene in here. So, for example, the name of the scene is level one, right? That'll load the scene, level one, because that's inside my build, right? Well, I want to do the same idea with instead of level one, I want to do the same idea here when I have my instructions. So, I'm going to copy this, right? So, it's going to be instructions button click. That's what it's going to be called. Instructions button click, and it's going to go to instructions. I got to make sure that it's called instructions though. Scene, and the way to check that, of course, is to go to scenes, right? And notice that it's capital I instructions, level one, and menu. Those are the things that are, that are called, right? So here's this one. Here's my start button, instructions button, and my back button, which is going to take me back to my menu scene. I got to program this, even though I don't have it in here. So put it up. And this is my back button click. Back button click, and it's going to go to the menu. All right, so I saved this. This this is the way it is now. Let's test it again. Um, let's go back to here and assign the buttons. All right, so here's my start button. Um, inside my click again, I've got to point to my game up, my game controller, right? In my start button, I got to choose my game controllers. Um, Function, which is my start button click. My instructions button, I gotta choose my game controller, right? And in my game controller, I gotta choose my um, game up, game controller, instructions button click. And my quit button, I don't have yet. We have to figure that out in a second, how to quit the game, right? Um, but let's see what happens. Just to make sure that this all works, right? I, I don't have my, my game controller. How do I assign? My button. Well, let's go back to the new scene. So let's go back to instructions. Oops. Here's my instruction screen. And if I look at my back button, which is inside my panel, my back button is my instructions. I can still choose my game controller. Yeah. Oh man, what's going on here? Can't choose my 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 uh, um, my game controller. It doesn't exist in my scene. How about in my assets? Oh, can't do that. So that's going to be an issue. Right, that I can't choose my back button in, because it doesn't exist. I want one game controller that persists, but I'm not going to have my back button work because I don't have anything right now. Right, so is this drag and drop functionality not going to work? How about editor and runtime? What about that? Is that different? So editor and runtime, nothing. I don't have anything inside there. I can't choose. I can choose the event system, my panel, my instructions camera. 
do all those kind of things. And I can also choose, sorry, I can also choose off, right? Um, and it says none, right? So that means that maybe what I can do is I can, in script, I can program this somehow. So it points to my other function. But if I have a script, I might as well run a script that connected to my button or another game controller that's just for this, right? Almost like my instructions controller, right? That, it takes me back. I'm pointing this out to you so you understand the challenges, OK? Let's go back to runtime only, right? Leave it as is. And for now, let's just get to the scene, right? And then we'll think about how to get back. So press play. Works. Let's go back to my menu. Save. Let's play. Okay, let's try this out. So I'm going to go here to my instructions, click onto it, and here I'm, I'm in my instruction screen, but nothing's going on here. And I don't have a game. Hey, what happened? I got my game controller. Here's my game controller right here. It exists, right? It, it persisted on load, right? By the way, guys, this is a great thing to do because if I want to carry forth a, a score and all that kind of stuff, it's good. But there's a challenge to this. If I go back to my menu, I'm going to have two game controllers. Right? Because it persists. It's going to live when I go back to my menu. Right? Just be aware. Right? So it's a problem. Let's go back and fix all this craziness that we've done. Right? So we don't need all this the way it's been written. Um, I'm going to go back to my scripts, game controller. Let's take this away. Um, and I want this back button click to be part of my, my menu. To keep it very simple, we'll make another a little script. And this is our, our game controller. Um, we're going to rename this thing menu controller because that's what really what it is, right? Here's my menu controller. And um, what I want to do is in my menu controller, I want to have the same thing for my instructions controller. So we'll have another scene. So I'll save, go back to my scenes, go back to uh, instructions, add a new empty object. We'll call this instructions controller. And my instructions controller, I'm going to add in a new script, which I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of create. Game controller's got to change, by the way. We have to change the name of this thing. So let's rename this game controller to, um, just for now, to menu controller. There's a challenge to this, of course, if I rename it, just FYI. So if I name this to menu controller, that's good. But when I open this up, I've got to make sure this says menu controller up here as well. That's what I have a problem. If you don't do this, menu controller in here, it won't work. Just FYI, it's got to be named properly. All right. One thing I do need is this back button. I'm going to cut it out of my menu controller, right? And I'm going to have this thing so that it's, um, you know, it carries forward. So here's my instructions controller. And I want to make a new script called instructions controller. Double click. And put that, plop that in there, which is my back button. Notice I, I, this is highlighted in red because I also have to include my using Unity engine dot scene management saved. Here's my instructions controller, my menu controller. And when I go back to here, um, I've got to attach my instructions controller to this thing. Right, there it is. And now that I have this, if I go back to my instructions, Right, so here's my canvas panel back button. And if I look down here, I'm going to choose my instructions controller. And inside here, I'm going to choose the function. So I'm going to go back to instructions controller. And then we want to have this back button click. It goes back to the menu. Okay, let's try this out and see if it works. So I'm going to go back to save this, back to my menu, press play, and my instructions. Back to the menu, instructions, back to the menu, it all works, right? So back and forth. By the way, this is the same thing that would happen in an end scene. You have an end scene, your final scene, game over, the button, it's going to take you back to your menu, right? Or your, or replay the game again, start over the game, right? Whatever it's going to be. Quit. Let's fix this up and then we'll stop for the day, right? So how do I make my quit button work? Quit means I want to quit out of the system. Right, so how do I stop play? Right, so again, back to here. What I want to do is I want to quit the game. Right, so Unity. Button, right, how do I do that? Making a quit button. 
Oh, well, look, there it is, application.quit. It was right there. Oop. So, uh, you know, you have a button, and then you says, well, if, if you press the escape key, application.quit. So that should work. Right? Let's see if it works. So I'm going to go back to my Unity. I'm going to double click on my script, right? So for my, uh, for my menu controller. And when I press the, the uh, button, public void button, click, and I want to application.quit. And there it is, application.quit. Is it like this? Or, got to make sure it's right, it's a method. So we're going to make it make sure it's a method call, right? No, that's the right way of doing it. So quit the quit the game, right? And um, while that works is good, I still got to program the button. So I got to go back into this, look at my menu panel, do my quick button, scroll down to here, choose my uh, menu controller. There we go, and then inside there, go to my menu controller, and choose my quick button click event, and now let's play. So cool. Instructions, back, quit. And now if you notice, it's hovered. It's just, it's not working. Huh? Come on, I have to build this thing? So what? Over here? What do you mean? I don't understand, there's nothing in here. This is just an input get key. I know. It doesn't work with the Unity Engine. Like in here, you mean. Let's see if you're right. So let's uh, save all. So file, uh, you know, save the scene. And let's finally do the build, like we talked about before, right? And then we'll end. So file, build, settings. Here's our scenes. And I want to do the build from Mac, because on my platform is Mac, right? So I want to click build. Now, here's what I want to do. This untitled build, I don't want it to go in my assets. I want to make a new folder called builds. Inside my builds, I want to make another folder called Mac, right? It's a Mac build. It might have, I want to have a Windows build, it might have whatever. So here's Mac OS X, right? This is where it's going to go, create. So in my Mac OS X standalone, right? I'm going to call this Mac right? OS X standalone. That's what the kind of a build it is. Notice that's over here, Mac and Linux standalone, right? I'm just gonna call it Mac OS X standalone and click save. Now you can call it the name of your file, the name of your game, like menu demo or whatever. It's gonna do its little build dance. It's gonna take a bit of time, but it's gonna produce that build inside my folder. Okay, what happened? What, how come they went away, my scene? Let's build and run. Let's just see what the difference is between build and build and run. Build and run, I've already built my scenes. Here's my Mac OS X standalone, I'm gonna save this thing, replace. As long as you have the right place, it does the build, and then what it does, it pops up this little thing. Hey, what happened here? How come I don't have a little pop-up that comes up here? Well, you have to program that, and you can do that in your build settings, right? For now, let's leave it as 1024 by, 760, or by 640, right? And fantastic graphics, and then press play. Let's see what happens. So it does the Unity uh, dance made with Unity, and then I've got my instructions, and then look how skewed they are. How come? Because it's stretching to fill my space. My space. My space is an aspect, right? It's not a fixed pixel width, right? So if I click quit, it takes me out, right? Um, if I want to find where this thing is, if I go back to here, where it says Mac Windows Standalone, here it is, right? If I double click on this, it'll launch the the, the uh, uh, object again. I can play, it will still launch the same way, right? And the great, this is a great way of testing. It's actually faster than running it within your uh, Unity build, right? Because now it's building, it's using the system, all system resources here. Click Instructions, I'm get into the Instructions, go back to my back menu. I can click Start, it's gonna take me to this empty Start screen and I'm stuck, right? So how do I get out of this thing, right? Well, I mean, I gotta be able to get take to exit somehow. Is there an exit button? Is there any way of getting out of here? No, there isn't, right? It really isn't. There isn't a way. If I click, try and quick list and, and, and quit, the only way I can do that is quit the system. Right? Just FYI. That's why it's important to have your level working and everything else, test it out, blah, 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 and have a way of exiting. 
right? Because otherwise your build is going to fail. It's not going to work. Questions? I'm going to stop here now. So I'm going to file save project. And what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to quit and I'm going to put this project up on GitHub so you guys can see I have all the assets that I made and everything else. Um, you also have the build that I made up as well, right? So let's check this out. I'm just going to go into uh, GitHub. And under GitHub and Centennial, we're going to make a new repository called Comp305. And it'll be a menu demo. All right. So there's my menu demo. And uh, in my scene, I'll close this up now too. And I'll even close this up too. Fireworks. Um, what I want to do is in my Unity projects folder, remember how I did this? I, I usually do this by hand, right? So here's my Unity projects. I want to find my build, menu demo, pull up a terminal. And again, you can do this in, on the PC as well. And drag and drop this so that it goes into the exact location, right? I'm going to say git emits, git add dot. Remember, I'm, my Unity is closed down right now, right? So it's going to add everything in there. Git commit minus m. Initial commit, all the regular things we do with, with Git. And now I want to share this on Git. And of course, I have all my instructions to do so here on GitHub. So I'm going to grab these two lines, go back to the terminal, and paste them in, press Enter. It's going to take that and put the project up online. And that little project that we just made, just to show you because of the build and everything else, look how big it is so far. It's five megs. You know, take out the build in there, right? The build adds overhead to your project, right? A little bit. OK, let's go refresh. And you can see that when you're refreshed, you'll see the, the build is there. And look how I have build Mac OS X, Mac OS X standalone app, right? But you guys can't use this build because you don't have a Mac, right? So let's make one for you, and then we'll finish off. Sorry, I forgot. No, when I make your build, it's going to be you can make it so that it runs right from the executable. You don't even need Unity to run. It's the build. You can actually give it to a friend, right? No problem. It'll run there too. So let's make a new build. So file, build settings. Actually, we'll build. Well, I can't build and run because I don't have a, a, a Windows system, but I can go build settings. And I want to make another build for Windows, right? And we're going to make this um, x86 64. So it's only going to run on 64 bit window machines. Okay, we're going to make a build. And instead of going to the right place, the same place, we're going to kind of go up to builds. And instead of this one, we'll make another one for Windows. Windows create. And then inside here, we'll say Windows standalone. Windows standalone. Now you would call, again, you would call this thing the name of your, uh, the name of your uh, game. It might be called the menu game, you know, whatever. That's what would be in here, not instead of Windows standalone. Click save. It's going to build everything for Windows, but it's going to be slightly different than what I had before, right? Because it's not a it's not a Mac build anymore. Okay, let's file. Uh, sorry, let's go to uh, close this off, and I'll go to file, save project, and then I'll close Unity off. And when I do that, once once Unity finally decides to close, notice that I have an executable, and I also have extra data. I have this Windows this extra folder. See how it needs. For Windows, you need extra folders. This, these extra folders here, this whole entire folder system needs to be part of the whole Windows build. You can't just take the, the executable by itself and run it. You need this other folder here as well, the data folder. All right, just letting you know, right? So that you can't just take one folder for Windows. You can't just give me the executable. If you just give me the executable in your GitHub and gave it to me, it won't run. It'll fail, right? But if you give me both the folders for Windows, that'll run fine, right? I need those. In fact, if there's anything else, give me all that stuff too, right? Okay, let's test this out. I'm going to put it up on GitHub. You download my build and see if it works for you, all right, for Windows. So let's do that first. So I'm going to go here, close this up, minimize this up, go into here, right? And I'll put in git add dot git commit minus m when it comes up. I'll say added Windows build. Right? And then git push origin master. What this is going to do is going to push up the build 
up to GitHub, just that one piece. That's the only thing I've built. I think it's a sweet time doing it. So each build you make, right, it has, takes up room, right? Right now it's like, it looks like it's 10 megs. It's not so big, but, and you might think, well, there's nothing in there, Tom. Like, why is it taking so much space? Because there's overhead, right? There's overhead for the build. So just wait for it. And if you notice, it's about 40 megs. 40 megs for Mac, 40 megs for Windows, 60 megs, right? Please don't give me 40 megs. Don't send me, oh, oh, what happened here? Look what it says here. Error, failed to push some references. It says, menu do I get? What's the problem? Why did it push? It says my file limit exceeds 100 megabytes, right? What file is that that I'm trying to send, set up? This one, this PDB file, right? This PDB file is the one that's having a problem going up to GitHub, right? And you might have the same problem. Just FYI, how do you fix it? What's that? Change the extension. No, that won't do. It's going to be still more than 100 megs. What else? What? Compress it, right? So it's one big compress, but it's still going to be more than 100 megs. The problem is it says it's exceeded the 100 meg limit. <laughs> Not a GitHub. Go ahead, talk to GitHub. Maybe they'll give you more than 100 megs. What was that? File. File shadow? Shredder. I don't know. That wouldn't do it. The point is, it will work. But did it work for Mac or did it fail? Let's go back up and see. Did it fail for Mac? Because, I mean, I did Mac one, Mac the Mac one already, right? Look. Da -da -da -da, everything else got edited in and we're good to go. Well, how come this one didn't work? Right, my executable didn't work for Windows, but it worked for Mac. <laughs> right. Let's take a look at the at the at the uh, what I've got up here. So if I refresh the scene, I refresh uh, you know GitHub, and if I go back up to um, uh, builds, I don't have my Windows build. Right. If I go in here, I got my Mac OS X, and I got nothing else. I don't have Windows. Right. <laughs> So that means this failed. My build failed because of my files being too big. Do you think trying it again would work? No. It's just FYI, right? So if the if you're just trying to put this up on GitHub, remember I told you I don't care about um, the build for GitHub. I want you to give me the build on eCentennial. That's okay, right? Because eCentennial will take the build, right? So you can't do it. You, what you need to do for you to make your project work for, for Windows is download your project, right? Make the build for Windows on your system, run it for you to test it, OK? Again, if I was to try it again, just to show you, just so to prove to you that I'm right, right? So I'm trying to do it, da 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 writing the objects. It's going to go to a certain point, and then it's going to go. <laughs> no. Huh? Oh, there's different ways, but file sharing. No, it's notice how it didn't work, right? It says error failed to push some references to da 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 da, da on the menu demo that I get, right? Because the my, my limit went above a uh, uh, 100 megs, right? And um, it says this player uh, PDB file is 150 megs, right? 150 megs. I could read. I could zip that, right? and unload it and unzip it, but that's still, the whole thing is gonna be more than 100 megs. Let's test that to make sure. So if I was to go, just one more one more thing, and sorry, I'm taking long, I meant to do other things with you guys today, but let's let's check, that's not the one. Let's test out the, test out the, uh, the build here. So if I'm gonna go to Unity Projects, and if I go to um, here, and go to Builds, and go to Windows, and if I kind of look at the executable size of this one, right, it's 20 megs. This one's 121 megs, right, for my this thing here, right? But do I really need these two, these PDB files for, for, when, for the build to work, or do I just need these two folders? Let's try this out. Let's just get, delete, delete this and see what happens. Move to trash, right, and this one too. Move to trash, right, and let's just put it up on GitHub now and see if you guys can work it, right? So I'll say you know, git push or your master. Wait, that's wrong. 
I did a mistake. I have to do the get add dot again and say remove thing. So it's not going to work. It's going to fail. Because it's trying to give me that thing, right? Oh, yeah. So git, it's in, the, it's in the, my commit. So I, I say git add dot, git commit minus m, removed pdb, ugly pdb file. I'll put that just to make it clear what it is. And it sees, see, see how it says delete, be deleted. They get, they get removed from the staging area. Git push origin master. Push it up now. See if it works. I got my executable and I got my folder, right? The folder that's with it, but I don't have my PDB files. Will this work? That's my question to you. And if it does, will it work when you download it? I want you to try it, right? Failed. It says, I got a problem. My player win next 64 PDB, blah, 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 etc. It's not there. I removed it. How come? Because my previous commit, my previous commit is still there, even though I've committed. My previous commit is still there. It's, it's not. It's not what it is. So what to do? Huh? Reinitialize. I could reinitialize my GitHub. So get rid of my GitHub and start a new start a new thing. I could revert the commit, but that means I would go back to what it was. So how do I revert the commit on command line? Ah, uh, you don't know, right? So if I go to Git help, right? And if you look at um, on what the options are, Git clone, init, add, move, re remove files from the working tree. Bisect, grep, show, branch, checkout, diff, merge, rebase, you know, fetch and push. I don't see anything that says revert, right? Yeah. Yes, that's different. That's, that's the, the uh, Windows version, or the sorry, the um, native version. Let's just get rid of it. All right. So it's so, so git, or sorry, remove minus rf dot git. So it kills that file, right? And then what I want to do here to make this right is get rid of this too. So settings. Go down to here, open this repository, delete it. Let's make it again in a second. Buy, make a new one, right? So plus new repository. Make sure that it's in the right place. Add it, add it in. La la la. Make sure I get these two things in here. Copy. Go back to here. Hit in it. Hit add dot. <clears throat> Get commit. Minus M, initial commit. Hold on. And now, paste, push. See if it works. Remember, I picked the files out. They're gone. Right? So I don't have that big file anymore. Right? Worked. OK, so now I check it and see if it works. So fine if I did this. Nice. But who cares? Maybe it's not going to work for you anyway. Check it out. Please. Yeah. Huh? You have a doubt? Okay, hold on. So just check out my, my stuff. Before we do this, check out, download it first and see if it works. Refresh. What's the problem? What's your doubt? On this project itself? No, I want to. Oh, we'll talk about that in a second. So, who's made it work? You downloaded it? It worked. So it's working okay. I got rid of the PDB file and it's good, right? And you can download, you can go to the menu and everything else. Quick, no problem. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. You need those two folders. You need the executable version plus the folder that's associated with it. So if I go to builds, right? One thing you do need in Windows, you do need this standalone executable file plus the folder that's inside of it because if you notice, it has all the details about how this thing would work. It has all the resources in here, right? As well as um, your mono develop uh, stuff for your DLLs. Everything else is in here for Unity Energy. You need all this stuff for it to work in an in a executable version. You don't need the PDB files, right? But they're there because Unity needs them. If you're going to open this build up again and do it again, open the build up, Unity uses the PDB uh, files themselves. So you could create a git ignore file that ignores PDB files. And that would work with, with, uh, with git, no problem. OK, that's it for me for today. Let's sit down. I want to talk about every to each group to see what they're going to do for Friday. Because Friday, your first 
concept is due for your final project. All right? And that was a long recording, maybe too long.